What's up, everybody? Matt Gajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. Today, we're talking some college football bets ahead of January the 2nd. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. And if you're listening on podcasts, leave a rating and review there, subscribe. That helps us a ton. So thank you if you've done that. We're also brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, and they have a phenomenal offer for you. We'll talk about it a little later in the show. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's dive into these games. Four up, four down. We'll kick things off with Illinois taking on Mississippi State. Two and a half point spread in favor of Mississippi State. The total in the game is 46. As usual, we'll start with opt-outs, injuries, transfers. For Illinois, we will not see stud running back Chase Brown. DB Sidney Brown and DB Devon Witherspoon not going to play in this game. They've all opted out to pursue a future in the NFL. For Mississippi State, Dylan Johnson, their running back, is transferring. Ra Ra Thomas, receiver transferred. Christian Ford transferred, another receiver. J.J. Jernigan, they had safety. Colin Duncan opt out of the game. And they lost Mike Leach, unfortunately. Brutal circumstances there. Illinois did lose their D.C. That's where we're at coaching-wise. I think with Mississippi State, you still see them run that traditional air raid attack. But what do these teams want to do? They actually play drastically different styles of football. Illinois runs that smash mouth run offense. They will be replacing Chase Brown, which is the single biggest departure from either team in this game. So that's very impactful to me. Mississippi State definitely doesn't play good run defense. They're 84th in the country there. But again, how impactful is Chase Brown? I would contend very impactful considering the stats he put up this year. And Mississippi State wants to run the air raid. Now they'll have Will Rogers still there. They lost Rob Rob Thomas and Christian Ford, but they have a lot of receivers. They're typically running four wide. So I'm not really all that worried about it. And then Illinois losing Sidney Brown and Devon Witherspoon. That's going to be big for a coverage unit that was ranked second in the country. So the more impactful losses are there. I don't have a strong lean in this game, and I'm probably not going to bet it just with the losses on both sides. I, you also have the motivation factor. Mississippi State's this team was Mike Leach's team. They'll be playing for him. So I lean Mississippi State's direction. Don't love the spread, but I think two and a half is fine if you want to grab some action. Second game, LSU takes on Purdue. This one is a 15-point spread, 54 total. And this one is wild in terms of absences. For LSU, some transfers. Jack Beck, Cole Taylor, both transferred. That's a receiver tight end. Opt-outs, receiver Jerry Jenkins, receiver Keishon Boutte, defensive end Ali Gay, defensive end B.J. Ojolari, cornerback Jay Ward, defensive lineman Jaquelin Roy, all not going to play. For Purdue, Spencer Holstegi, he's a guard, transferred. Colby Lewis, transferred, running back. Opt-outs, they have Corey Trice, corner, Aiden O'Connell, quarterback. Charlie Jones, receiver, one of the best in the country. Linebacker Jalen Graham, tight end Payne Durham, defensive lineman Lawrence Johnson and Branson Dean, all out of this game. So from a handicapping perspective, you talk about losses on both sides. Well, LSU recruits at such a high level that some of these absences I don't think are going to be felt as much. Meanwhile, Purdue, I mean, you're losing Aiden O'Connell, Charlie Jones. Like, there's no replacement for these guys. There's no replacement for Payne Durham. They also lost their coach. The defenders you're losing, there's no replacements for. This isn't a highly recruited roster with four and five stars all over it like LSU is. So I think LSU is the side here. They also have Jaden Daniels coming back. He should be healthier here. Their running backs are back. Outside of Butte, you still have some pass catchers that I think are formidable. So LSU, I think, is where I look. But, I mean, the spread is just impossible to bet with what they're losing. Total impossible for me to bet. This is up there with Wisconsin, Oklahoma State for bets that I want no part of. All right. Want to take some time out of the program to talk about our presenting sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, phenomenal no-brainer offer that you can take advantage of. Head over to DraftKings Sportsbook or click the link in the video description below. Make your first deposit of up to $5 or at least $5, not up to, at least $5. And then take that $5, wager it on any pregame money line. And if that bet wins, you're turning that five into 150. Again, the bet needs to win. So I think the best way you can take advantage of this is find a big favorite, bet them on the money line. And then again, if you win, you get that $5 turned into 150. An example of this today now, tomorrow, I should say, we're recording this on Sunday, is LSU, 15-point favorites over Purdue. You hit LSU on the money line, pretty likely to win that bet, which means that $5 automatically becomes $150. Again, link in the video description below to take advantage. Tulane taking on USC. This should be a fun one. 
two point spread in favor of USC, 63 and a half total. And absences, Tulane is essentially nobody. They lost Day Day McDougal earlier this year, but they're running five wide or five deep, I should say, at receiver anyway. So I don't think that's too impactful. USC, you had Caleb Williams injured. He's going to play here, it looks like. Travis Dye also got injured. Not really too important. They have Austin Jones. For opt outs, you lose Jordan Addison. Again, he missed a lot of the year. So you still have plenty of receivers Tosh Washington, Brandon Rice. I mean, they should be fine. Offensive line is an issue here. Andrew Voorhees opted out. Brett Nealon, he went down with an injury in the Pac 12 championship. So those are big losses. How does that affect Caleb Williams and the run game? That could be something we see here. But ultimately, Tulane is only 62nd in pass rush anyway. We'll we'll find out, but I'm not too worried there. And ultimately, I think the decision in this game comes down to how healthy you think Caleb Williams is. If you have a 100% healthy Caleb Williams, I think USC is covering the spread. Again, they lose Addison, but you still have a number of receivers. Mario, Mario Williams, Taj Washington. I mean, we could go on. They have a lot of good skill position players around Caleb Williams. We know their defense is, is Swiss cheese. They're almost fully intact. Lose a couple guys, but that doesn't matter to me. I do think Tulane puts up points, but if you tell me this goes to a 63 and a half total, which offense am I more comfortable in in a shootout situation? It's USC. Love Tulane, but we'll be back in the Trojans here. Final game, we'll go Utah taking on Penn State. One point spread in favor of the Utes, 52 and a half total here. For opt-outs and absences, Utah, they will be without both of their tight ends. Dalton Kincaid opted out. They haven't had Keithy in a while here. Tavian Thomas declared for the draft ahead of the end of the season. And Clark Phillips, their stud corner, also opted out. For Penn State, you use Joey Porter Jr. to an opt-out. He's their stud corner. Parker Washington as well, but he was already injured. So I think Cam Rising is going to play here a bit surprisingly, but they're essentially down their top two pass catchers moving forward with receivers that don't have much production. Thomas Yasmin at tight end, their best corners out. That was the strength of their defense. Like Utah was 70th in run defense, 89th in pass rush, 22nd in coverage. Losing Clark, Clark Phillips is going to be massive here. Penn State's a roster full of underclassmen. You still have Clifford. Both their running backs are underclassmen here. Offensive line is fairly intact. Your receivers, you still have Tinsley, Keandre Lambert-Smith, a number of tight ends here. Their defense is weaker against the run. They're 90th in run defense. They're great in pass rush and pass coverage, 8th in pass rush, 30th in coverage. Utah hasn't been able to run the ball very well this year. They're, they're pretty decent at run blocking, but now you're moving forward like Micah Bernard is your lead back here. He's an undersized pass catching back. It's going to be tough for Utah overall. I like Penn State plus one. I wish I would have grabbed them when they were closer to a field goal. And ultimately at the plus one, I think that's fine. You're going to have to pay a little bit more juice if you want to take them on the money line, which is fine here too. But the side for me is Penn State. And that'll do it for us today with the Odd Shopper channel. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the sides in this game. And hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe on the way out. If you'd like to reach out to me on Twitter, I'm at that underscore Kajeski. Otherwise, only one more video left, the national championship. So stick around. We'll be breaking it down for you. Until then, good luck.